I slept so bad. Like, I was just, I was knocked out, like, the whole entire time. But are you ready for holiday break? I'm so excited. I'm ready for the two weeks we have off. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited for that. I'm ready for two weeks off of... Oh, oh hey, BGCB. <laughs> Hi, Wizards. I'm Matthew. And I'm Sharice Whittington. And you're watching BGTV. BGTV. Let's get into this week's episode. That's it. I'm not going. This week on BGTV, we have Christian covering the On My Mind project with Mr. Caldron. Next, we have Michael Brockway with sports. After that, we have Kylie Oquendo handling the holiday commercial. Then, we have Emily Gorzinski covering the New York Pack annual Nutcracker. Following, we have Hannah covering the Monell Fire Department Santa Breakfast. And lastly, we have Learning with Liz. Have you ever wanted your work published? Well, now you can make that dream a reality. That's so amazing. I can see a lot of really amazing opportunities coming from this. So let's see what Christian has to say about that in his event. I'm sure it's going to be super exciting. Me too. I'm here reporting a unique opportunity for Washington's up and coming writers. What's the main idea behind the On My Mind program? Well, what they do is they offer an opportunity for high school students to be published. So they collect strong student writing from across New York schools in New York State and the best entries as selected by the different schools um, get printed in a real book and celebrated. How do you think students can benefit from a unique assignment like this? Well, one of the exciting things was as we've been studying identity and identity conflicts in literature, this invitation to participate in the program appeared and one of the subjects that they opened up as something students could write about was that very thing. So we thought, what a great opportunity to get us thinking about what makes us who we are and how different kinds of authors and stories have explored this question through the conflicts that their characters experience. I think um, you can learn a lot about yourself uh, through the stories that you uh, read and, and experience. How can students from around the school enter works of writing? Well, one way is they can talk to their English teachers um, and submit directly to their English teachers, or they can email them directly to me. Um, if they want help getting started on their writing, we also do have a writing center that meets every Tuesday. Um, that might be a great place to uh, find others who are like you working on this project. Thank you for your time, Mr. Calder. It's my pleasure, thanks. Well, that's all I have for this week. Back to Matt and Therese in the studio. So Wizards, we're going to show you guys some new sports. So Matt, would you like to fill them in on that? <laughs> See, I don't know sports. Uh -huh. I'm better with the mascara wand than with the baseball bat. So I'll just let Brockway cover that one. Welcome back Wizards. I'm Michael Brockway here with Wizards Sports. Girls basketball lost their two games this week, while the swim team came in second on Saturday and won their meet on Monday. Wizards Wrestling had another outstanding week, with Drew Marchese and Austin Maddox placing second and sixth respectively in the advanced division, and Jacob Poppy placing third in the B division. Hockey won one game and tied another this past weekend, starting their season off strong. Now let's check in on Washington's newest sport, varsity bowling. Uh, the team bond of bowling is, it's nice because everyone is working at their own game, but they're able to notice what other people are doing as well. So the team bond of bowling really goes into helping everyone else just improve their own individual game by noticing what they're doing and maybe even using that to help their own game as well. That's Coach Brown, one of the two coaches of the varsity bowling team, alongside Coach Marion. Together, they helped to start the varsity bowling team at Washington High School. Since this is their first year, I thought I'd ask the players for some information about their sport. So there's two games 
and then the first game is worth 10 points and the second game is worth 10 points. There's a five on five bowlers. So if I'm versing another person and I win, then I take the point. There is different for sports because although maybe people think it's an individual sport, it's actually, we also have a team score and we actually have to help each other out. And uh, we just go out there, play our best, and together we try to win as a team. How do you think bowling has made you grow as a person? I think it actually, what it made me grow as a person is like, I learned that I'm good at other things than just sitting on my couch playing video games. And, all, and it helps me communicate with more people as like I went to different bowling alleys, talked with them, and it made me realize like what else I can learn from just, bo just standing there and bowling and getting some pins down. Excited because I just started bowling this year, and it's um, it's very coincidental that they just started a bowling team this year. So yes, I'm very excited. So I decided to try it out for myself. I headed to Washingtonville's home alley at Colonial Lanes, laced up my pro bowling shoes, and grabbed the first ball I saw to start my match. All right, here we go. First frame. All right, get re get ready for this. It didn't go so well. After a lot of trial and error. I found it wasn't as easy as I thought to be a bowler. All right, so right now I'm at um, five frames. I bowled five frames, and the score is 30, 31, 31. It's solid, I'm, I'm getting there. And I'm gonna try some new techniques that I saw them do at the, at the meet last week. So let's, let's see how those go. Some of these techniques helped and some of them not so much. But I can definitely tell that practice makes perfect when it comes to bowling. I'm so glad nobody else was in the alley to watch me. We just bowled our seventh frame and so far, I ain't doing so hot. Not, not the best. But you know what's all right? I'm learning. Still got three frames to go. This can make or break my game. So. I'm gonna try yet another technique that I think will really improve my score. So let, let, let's see what I have. All right, that was my ninth frame. And so I got one frame to go. This is the most important frame. I'm at 50 points right now. It's safe to say I need a lot of practice before I ever go back there. Since Dominique told me her best game is over 150 points. Wow. So uh, how long have you been a dinosaur? Thank you for sparing your time with me this week, Wizards. And good luck to the varsity bowling team. I'm so glad they finally got the recognition of a varsity sport. I'll catch you on the flip side. Now for our weekly PSA with Kylie. Where she's gonna be talking about all the stress during the holidays. About 81% of Americans said they will be staying home with their families for the holidays. 26% of those are not looking forward to these events. 45% of people said they'd rather spend their holidays in a hotel instead of home because they anticipated drama between them and their family members. People who dislike the holidays have lots of anxiety and sadness at the prospect of returning home. Home should be a safe place of security, but for many, they're returning home to a toxic environment. Many people have little to no relations with their family members, causing dread throughout the holidays. Psychoanalyst Bernadette Ryan says that it's impossible to go back to the family of origin because they feel disempowered as soon as they walk into the door. Check in on your friends and others to make sure they are doing okay this holiday season. Need help with an upcoming writing assignment? Well, guess what? The Writing Center meets every Tuesday in room 122. Sign up in the main office today. It's super helpful. You won't regret it. But do you want to share your favorite movie, book, or song? Join Beyond the Book today. 
They meet every Tuesday after school. I'm definitely taking advantage of that. Want to save your memories forever? Your books are on sale at www.johnsons.com. Order today. Want extra help studying for a region? Come to Weekly Regents Review. They begin after break until May. Sign-ups are available in the main office. Too bad I already took all mine. I don't have any. Does your physical expire soon? Well, guess what? Get an updated physical every Friday. Sign up in the nurse's office. Attention any students interested in theater, choral studies, ballet, dance, media arts, or visual arts. The New York State Summer School of Arts is holding a week-long opportunity for musicians, so you can find out more in the main office. Matt, that would be perfect for you. I already got into my school, girl. I'm chilling. Did you hear that NYPAC held their annual Nutcracker this week? No way. I wish I could have went. I wonder how that went. Well, you don't have to worry about how it went because Emily recorded the whole thing and got the inside scoop for us. So let's check it out. Now, how many hours did you put into this nutcracker? Um, I think probably around 50 hours. Is that a lot? It doesn't feel like a lot, but like probably. Probably? Yeah. What role in the Nutcracker do you want to be when you get older? I want to be Clara, probably Clara. This year, I'm Clara in the Nutcracker. She gets to meet the Nutcracker. And dance around. Yeah. Yeah, and do all the special parts and get a big crown. Now, what's the hardest type of dance, you think? I say tap because the moves can be very challenging, moving from heel to toe and all that stuff. And what's your favorite part about the Nutcracker? My favorite part about the Nutcracker is being able to see all my friends and have a fun time dancing with them. So I'm the student representative, which means I speak at any of our events that we hold, and I'm also a mentor to the younger dancers. I love that show. They did an amazing job. Things they did, that. They did that. That was they so really good. Did. Really. Okay, guys, now it's time for Hannah's segment, and she's going to be covering the Monell Fire Department's Breakfast with Santa, and it's so cute. I hope you guys love it. I can't wait. I wish I would have won. I miss Santa and meeting with him. See, I caught Santa one year, but I can't say anything else. It's top secret. Lucky you. Hey Wizards, today I'm here bright and early at the Monell Fire Department to go eat breakfast with Santa. Let's go see if he's here yet. This has been going on for at least 35 years and the funds go to support Monell Engine Company. Why are you here today? Um, well, my dad's in the Washington Fire Department because my grandpa was in the Washington Fire Department and my dad, um, He's in the Washington Fire Department too, so, yeah. Cool, and what are you asking Santa for this year? Well, I'm asking for a lot of stuff. Um, I want a new laptop and stuff, yeah. What are you asking Santa for this year? A baby go bye-bye. Okay, so what are you guys asking Santa for this year? Um, LOL dolls. Nice. And what about you? A cat. A cat? Fun. That's all the holiday cheer I have for you today, Wizards. I'm going to go tell Santa what I want now. Merry Christmas. Okay, guys, now we're back with our on-the-street correspondent, Alyssa. Now, she may have changed her name and all, but, you know, I can't wait to see it. Learning with Liz is next. And she's going to be testing people's spelling. 
So this week on Learning with Liz, I'm going to be asking people how to spell some commonly misspelled words. But first, I think I look a little too casual. I'm going to have to jump into something more formal. Much better. You look so much more professional. Let's go. So, can you spell the word pterodactyl for me? T A. It starts with a P. Pterodactyl. <laughs> So, Mr. Anastasi, can you spell the word onomatopoeia for me? <laughs> should know this, I teach it. O N A M A T O P E I A. P H A D A R. P H? You said such with a P. You said such with a P H, though. So, David, can you spell the word pronunciation? P R O U N C A T I O N. I think that was a little wrong. Can you spell the word pterodactyl? <clears throat> pterodactyl. T E R. It starts with a P. <laughs> Can you spell the word accommodate? A C C O M I D A T E. Can you spell the word pronunciation? <laughs> <laughs> can you spell the word accommodate? No, I can't. Can you spell the word pharaoh? M I S S I S S I P P I. That's Mississippi. Can you spell the word misspell? M I S P E L L. P T. P T. <laughs> A R D A L C E S. Persodactyls. Can you spell the word psychology? P S Y C H O L O G Y. Good job, good job. Oh, my brain hurts from all that spelling. Gotta change to some more comfortable clothes for this. Much better. Tune in for the game show next time. What an amazing year and decade this was. Can you believe it's almost over? I can't, and I can't believe that it's gonna be 2020, the new decade, the year we graduate as seniors. That's like really big. This oh is gosh. our time. This is our time, seniors. Oh yeah, I'm kind of freaking out internally, but you will never see that. Senioritis is hitting bad, guys. Okay, let's count down into the new year <laughs> for the end of the episode. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Girl, stop! I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can't.